Alright, so today we're going to evaluate the shear stress in a T-beam cross-section using only variables. No numbers are required. Okay, so here we have a generic section from a beam with the neutral axis placed as such. And we're going to load it with a force V and V plus dV, as well as a moment M and M plus delta M. So these forces and moments will create stresses, and for this particular cross-section, it will be tensile below the neutral axis and compressive above the neutral axis, with sigma being equal to my over i, and on the other side, sigma plus d sigma equal to m plus dm times y over i. We'll have our coordinate axes placed as such, and once again, the compression will be above the neutral axis and tension below the neutral axis. So here's our cross section for our T-beam. It has a width F, a thickness T for the web and flange, a height of the web being W, and we have axes at the bottom of the cross section. Now the vertical axis will be the N axis or line of symmetry, and we'll have the M axis be the base of the T-beam. So what we need to do is find the location of the neutral axis. So we're going to start by finding the sum of NIAI terms, which to put a little sim more simply, will be the sum of each area times its offset from the origin. So this blue area here has a, an area of WT and its offset is W over 2. For the red area, its area is FT and its offset is W plus T over 2. Now the sum of areas is simply WT plus FT and then if we divide our first term by the term we just found, the sum of AI, so the sum of NIAI over the sum of AI, we'll find the N distance to the center of the area. So that turns out to be 1 half W squared T plus FWT plus 1 half FT squared, all of that over WT plus FT. So for most T beams, W is much, much greater than T, and F is also much, much greater than T. So because of that, we're going to neglect the T squared term. Now, once we do that, we'll find that the end distance can be said as w squared plus 2fw over 2w plus f. Okay, so here's our cross section one more time. And now that we've found where the center of area is, we can put our neutral axis there. So we're going to also create a new set of axes, x, y, z, and we're going to place those at the centroid. So in 3D, it'll look like this. Now, our cross-section, the area we're going to look at, so the kind of section of our beam, will have a depth of delta x. So from a side view, we'll see something like this. So this is a general idea of what the stress will be doing for this cross-section, loaded with bending moments and shear forces. So we'll have compression above the neutral axis and tension below. And once again, here are our axes and just another explanation of how the stress is changing throughout the cross-section. On the left side of the cross-section, we have that sigma is equal to my over i, and then as we move through the section, we'll find that we have added stress, so sigma plus d sigma, and that'll be simply equal to m plus delta m times y over i. So we're first going to look at a cut at a that you see here on the diagram. Our coordinate axes are going to be aligned at the centroid like this, so if we remove the top portion, we'll just see the bottom section where we had made the cut. So it'll have a thickness of delta x, a height of d, and a width of t. Now tau yx will act on an area t delta x, and tau yx will be equal to vq over it. Now using Newton's third law, we'll know that tau yx of the top portion should equal tau yx of the bottom portion along the same cut. So for the top portion, tau yx top will be equal to vqw over it, where qw is the first moment of area q for area w, so that w you see on the top part of the cross-section. And for tau yx bottom, it'll be equal to vqu over it, where qu is the first moment of area q for the area u, for the bottom part of the cross-section. So we're going to start by finding a basic strategy for finding tau yx. So in general, you can calculate the magnitude of tau yx by taking a cut and examining either side of the cut. You get the same value. However, for most beam problems, you'll need to calculate q for a collection of rectangles. And it's generally easier to use the piece with the least amount of rectangles for calculating q. So for instance, we have two cross sections. 
Really, it's the same cross-section, but we're looking above the cut and below the cut. So, when we look below the cut, we only have to find Q for that one area. However, if we look above the cut, we now have two rectangles we need to find Q for. So, it's much easier to actually use the area on the left than the areas on the right. So now we're going to find shear stress on plane B. So once again, we have our corner axes, and now you can see where B, the cut there, will be made. So if we move the top portion, it looks like this. Once again, a depth of delta X, a thickness T, and we'll have tau YX running across the surface in the same direction as it was previously, with tau YX equaling VQ over IT. Now, if we look from the front of the cross-section, here is the area we're going to be looking at. So we have a little bit of it above the neutral axis and some of it below the neutral axis. So the distance to the neutral axis, as before, was W squared plus 2FW over 2 times the quantity W plus F. And we're going to say that the height of the total area is D. So to find Q for this section, we'll say that Q is equal to DT times the quantity w squared plus 2fw over 2 the quantity w plus f minus d over 2. Then, if we would like to find tau yx, we'll say that that is equal to vd over i times the quantity w squared plus 2fw over 2 times the quantity w plus f minus d over 2. All right, so now we're going to find the shear stress on plane c. Now, plane C is located in the flange section of our cross-section. So if we remove the bottom portion, it'll be a little easier to see what we're talking about. So we have our section we're going to be looking at here. It has a height of D, a depth of delta X, and a width of F. And as we see, tau YX is actually going in the opposite direction of plane B that we looked at previously. So if we look at our cross-section from the front, we can see our area here. Now the Q for this area can be found by taking F times D times the quantity W minus W squared plus 2FW over 2 times the quantity W plus F plus T minus D over 2. Now that we found Q, we can say that for W much, much greater than T, that's greater than D, and F much, much greater than T, that's greater than D, we can also neglect the d squared term, like we neglected the t squared term earlier. So, with that simplification, we find that q is simply equal to w squared fd over 2w plus 2f. Then, plugging this into the tau equals bq over it equation, we find that tau yx is equal to vw squared d divided by i times 2w plus 2f. So previously we've made only horizontal cuts, but what if we make a vertical cut at D? So if we move the right half for clarity, we see that we have a section that's width is F over two minus D, and that comes from the distance to the left edge of the section being a distance D from the centroid. And then using a, a little bit of manipulation, you can find the thickness to be F over two minus D. Now the height of the section is t and a depth of delta x for the section. Now tau zx this time is running across the face as such and is still equal to vq over it. So tau zx means tau on the z face going in the x direction. So we have our cross section once again, coordinate axes aligned as such, and the area we're looking at in blue. So we're going to find q for this area. So we're going to start by taking f over 2 minus d times t times the quantity w minus w squared plus 2fw over 2 times the quantity w plus f plus t over 2. So we're going to make a simplification that if w is much, much greater than t and f is also much, much greater than t, then we can neglect any t squared terms. With that simplification, we find that q is equal to w squared over 2w plus 2f times the quantity f over 2 minus d times t. Now, when we plug that into our VQ over IT, we find that tau ZX is equal to V times W squared times the quantity F over 2 minus D all over I times 2W plus 2F. 